They're like, carbs are bad. I was like, I'm not telling you to go eat a candy bar. I'm saying like a half a cup of rice on your plate would be like awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Those are the conversations that we have. Like a sandwich is great. A wrap is great. It doesn't always have to be a salad. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, it's super fun. And then sequence was like, Hey, you do some social media stuff. You want to make some videos? I was like, yes. Absolutely. And so I've become like this little dietitian spokesperson, social media person at Sequence, which is hilarious. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. That includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to continue to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and And consult consult your doctors. doctors. Guys, we all need our vitamins after surgery, regardless of what you think. Yes. It's a must. Yes. So why not choose the easiest and the best tasting in the community. Seriously, it's pro care, guys. Pro Go. care is so delicious. I use their chewable for over a year. That's yes, how I, I know. Yes, and I love their capsules. Yes. Love them. They're yes. once a day. I take them at night. Easy peasy. And my labs are fantastic. Yeah, our labs are great. And I've actually switched to the capsules and I take those at night now. So yes. if you guys need your iron, they have them with iron and they have them iron free. They even have calcium chews. Yes, the calcium chews. Mm. Perfect. They have mocktail ones, cal- uh, chocolate. They have also some caramel and a cinnamon roll. They're freaking delicious. So go over to ProCareNow.com and use our code OSLP to save some money. Guys, how do you get better prepared for your weight loss journey? Duh, by getting all the guesswork out of your portion control. And Uba does that for you. They make portion control products like plates, bowls, portion containers, and even flatware. And they're porcelain, which means that they are oven, dishwasher, and microwave safe. No plastic. Yeah. So go get your Uba containers now. My goodness. So you can either go to our link in our bio, or you can just go over to their website. It is ubahome.co. And that is uba, U-B-A, home.co and use OSLP for, for a discount. All know how difficult post-op life can be. Yeah. It's pretty freaking hard guys. Yes. And so a way to make it a little bit easier is by joining the Tribe membership program. It has been created by a registered dietitian. She's actually the sleeve dietitian on Instagram. Her name is Jamie. And she's created this whole membership program just to support us. Yeah, like we've one, we've had her on the podcast. We love her to freaking death. And then two, like she has full experts in their field that help you. And they've had bariatric surgery, almost every one of them. Yes. And the diet, the sleep dietitian is freaking smart because she has almost a support group every single day, guys. Yes. You're going to get an email. It's going to tell you which ones are for today. And you can just sign up and hang out with people that are just like you. Mm-hmm. And I've even used the journal prompts. I'm into journaling and that was way helpful to just go somewhere that can help you and just get your mind going. Yes. So if you need this kind of support, which a lot of us do, mm-hmm. go to her website and use our code OSLP at checkout to get your discount. Welcome back, OSLP family. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleeve Life podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Mo. Hey, I did that without even thinking. Good job, girl. That means I'm uh, back in the groove, That's people. Right. She's on it. Yes. I love I'm it. I'm feeling good. I'm excited for today. You know, I'm feeling really good today, too. Yay. It's yeah. a sunshine. It's a sunshine. It's be I sunshine. worked my ass off yesterday. You did. Hour you and did. a half in the gym. Yeah. Pumping Go that you. iron, man. Making yeah. some gains. Yeah. And while, you know, we like to begin all of our episodes mm-hmm. with reminding you that we have the first ever, well, it's the, the first of its kind, kind, second annual Just Be You Bariatric Awards show. That's right. It is going to be in September. September 30th, 30th in Washington, D.C. That's right. People. At the Howard freaking theater. It's a beautiful, beautiful theater. It's huge. We love it. It's be- like you would once you guys go there. So all of you go there. Yes. Well, first <laughs> off, go to, to JBY. jbyawards.com. Yeah. Buy your ticket. 
find out all the information, book your hotel, do all the things on there. Seriously, because you're going to when you go inside, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is totally Kelly and Mel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we did so much. Re- well, Sarah did a lot of research Sarah. and then said, these are the options you have. And we knew it from the moment no, we, we looked online. We yeah. knew that was it. And then we walk in. We're like, holy shit. This yeah. is totally us. We're like, this is us. This is what we want. This well, is totally going to be it. And the people there are like us, too. So yes. they literally want everybody to be themselves have a great time mm-hmm. and just enjoy the atmosphere. Yes. So that's what we're bringing. We're bringing all the people. There's going to be so much random stuff happening. It's going to be a we lot have of fun. Some plans. We have some plans in order and it's a full weekend. So it's not just the award show. Yeah. It's actually Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. And we're incorporating everything that we can think of that mm-hmm. will help the community because the very community is a little community and we need to help all of you as much as possible. Yes. So we have like a sound bath. We have some yoga. We have some gym stuff. Yeah. Um, what else do we have, Cal? We have a live podcast from the Eaton Hotel, which okay. is where our room block is. They have a old school radio station in the Mm -hmm. front of their building of course we knew that was our hotel from that moment oh seriously Um, they we are going to do a live podcast from there and you can listen to it in their library yes they have a library and behind the library is a speakeasy i'm not joking not joking at all this is actual things that are going to be happening right and they are they customize everything to the people yes like that's what we also love is that it's very unique so like they have a record player in every room yes and when you sign up with them, they'll tell talk to you about kind of like the your interest and what things what that you're into. You and they'll put in records in there and books. And books. From the library yeah. that would help match you. Yes. So, which I love because I'm a huge reader. And so. I'm a huge music person. Yes. So this is like. So it's like a perfect mix of both of us mm-hmm. in one place. So yeah. you do not want to miss this. Um, we are nominations just ended. Yeah. So all of that information is going to be coming out soon of who is our top five. Oh, this is so cool. I know. Voting starts starts August 1st. Yes. And so get ready for that um, and get your ticket because as much as we want to bring this community into the light, we want to say we're here. We're not going anywhere. Our community is growing every single freaking day. Yeah. But we also want to bring people together. So if you are feeling like you don't have support, you could find your very bestie at an event like this because they have. We've they been have. told they we, really have. They've they've done it at our live shows. They've done it at the mm-hmm. last award show, even in our Benchy group. Yes. Which we need to talk to them about our Benchies. Yes. Speaking of Benchies, mm-hmm. Benchies is our support group that is on Facebook. It is not one of those Facebook groups. So get that out of your head right now. Yep. It is very supportive. And easy to come in and just meet other people that yeah. are just like you. Yeah, I, it's a safe place. Like it's you can very talk safe. about anything that you want to yep. talk about. We will help you through your struggles. We will help you through uh, through your celebrations. Yes, like we will celebrate you because I know what it feels like to not get celebrated like yeah. at all. Yeah. So you know that's yeah, what we I'm definitely here for. celebrate you and make you feel welcome. We have so if you want to become a part of our Benchy group. Go to patreon.com forward slash OSLP, sign up in the $7 or higher tier, Mm -hmm. and you will get a little message from us with all of the details and you will be admitted in and you can join in. And plus you get a once a month Zoom call with us with us. And we talk about non-scale victories. What would you tell people that are going Going through pre-op, newly post-op? Like we ask all sorts of questions. There's a different question every single month and everybody gets a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really lovely space to be. Yeah. And if you guys are like $10 or higher, you're going to get special episodes just from us. And videos. And videos. And they're called That's What She Said Corner. Yes. And they're a lot of fun. And they're they're not really about bariatrics. It's, it's just about, about us life. and the shit that we're going through. Yep. Because, you <laughs> so, know, it, it, life it is not all about bariatrics. Yeah. No. There are other things that happen in your life. And so that's where we share what's going on with yeah, us. Yeah. Like literally we did a patron call two days ago. And yes. at the end, I was like, I'm going to cry because water was coming down from my ceiling onto our equipment yes. <laughs> in the middle of it. And it was wild. Yes. But like you get, you know, live stuff from us. Like yeah. shit really does happen. Yes. And, you know, there is a free way 
to, to support, support us. us. And that is YouTube. It is on your phone. Mm-hmm. It is on your computer. It is preloaded, it is preloaded on your phones. That's right. So click on it. Type in our Silly Life podcast. We are the only ones and hit subscribe and the bell because it means a lot more to us than you. Yes. And then you get an actual episode every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That's video from us. And if you're on YouTube, then you know that we have a guest today. And she's been so patient. She has while we been. go through the, our long beginning. <laughs> um, but we are super, super excited to have Summer Kessel. She is a registered dietitian. She also works with Sequence and also is on a GLP-1 medication. And we cannot wait to hear all the things about her. Thank you so much for being on, Summer. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm so excited to be here. I follow you guys on Instagram. Oh. I just love the vibe. I love pink. I'm just all about it. So <laughs> we got the pink. We got the pink. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so can you tell us where... Cause you battled what you shared with us that you battled with your weight all your life, my whole life, your like, whole life. Since I can remember six, I don't know, seven, eight okay. being a kid that like my parents were like, you really going to have seconds. Like you don't need that. Like just overeating, okay. just really my parents are amazing. No shade to them, but yeah. like, just, I remember being in dance class, mm-hmm. you know, little and being the big girl Oh yeah, and always just being bigger mm-hmm. And struggling with my weight pretty much my entire life, wow. dieting through, you know, middle school and high school and just struggling, struggle, just yeah. struggle. And I've always just been hungry, like just, right. I'm, just hungry. I'm I really like, like food. Food is amazing. Food is delicious. Yes. I would eat when I was happy, eat when I was sad, eat to celebrate, eat just because it was there. Mm. Like I love food. Oh yeah, so, I can relate to you because I was a big kid my whole life. Yes, my whole whole life. life. But only thing that's different, they encourage seconds in my house. <laughs> They're like, Melanie, oh. why haven't you had your seconds yet? And I was like, Hold on. I literally remember one time I told them, Let me burp so I can make sure I have more room. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do I not know that? I remember it super. I can like picture it right now. We're at my grandma's house and we were having cake and lasagna, of and. Course. Literally, I had my first, it was, I was like maybe eight, eight years old. Okay. And I ate it all. And they're like, Mel, you got to have seconds. Like all of it. Cause everybody was having seconds. I'm from Italian family. So yeah. everybody was having seconds. And then I'm like, hold on. Burp. And then I'm like, all right, I got my room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Wild. You know, bless my parents' hearts. Like we're active family. My mom is a PE coach. Oh, like, okay. So I played sports. I did all the things. I played basketball. I figure skated. I ballet. Wow, wow. Like I was super active no matter what I did. I was yeah. still a bigger girl. In retrospect, I was just tall and muscular and athletic. And okay, like okay. it was the 90s. So that was probably a little bit skewed. Yeah. My perception of my size. But I just always remember struggling with wanting to eat more than I probably should. Yes. And, um, like I said, I started dieting in like high school. Um, and that started the vicious cycle of losing and gaining and losing and gaining and Mm -hmm. life happens. I gained so much weight when I went away to college. The first That's what we hear. Started drinking alcohol, the unlimited food halls Mm -hmm. at the dorm, like buffet. It's like being on a cruise ship 24 seven. Right. And it's when you're a person who just has a huge appetite and loves food and you have unlimited options and nobody to tell you no. Yeah. And nobody to tell you no. Mm -hmm. Like it's so, it was so easy for me to overeat. So I just always really, really struggled with my weight to the point that I was like, I'm going to figure this out. Did all the diets, did all the things. Mm -hmm. I lost a hundred pounds. Okay. Diet and exercise, like extreme diet and exercise. Okay. Had a vegan phase and I had like a CrossFit phase. Like I did all the things. Yeah. And um, which was great, felt good. Um, I thought. And then I got married and had a baby. Mm-hmm. And I gained it all, almost all of it back. Like oh, I gained wow. so much weight in my pregnancy. I gained even more weight postpartum. Mm-hmm. And I was back where I started. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of when I decided like, Hey, I need to figure this out. And I went back to school to be a dietitian. Wow. You're like literally took a hold of it and was like, Nope, no more. I'm going to learn what I need to learn to do this. Yeah. Right. So my highest weight before I lost weight, a hundred, the first hundred pounds, the first time I was getting close to like 
in the 300s. Okay. Probably a time that I weighed more than that because you, at some point you just stop. Yeah, like, stop weighing you Always stop weighing. Yep. You're like, nah, yep. fuck it, not happening. Yep. You're like, I'm yeah. not going on that scale. That's going to stay over there. I have, a, I have a memory. I live in Florida. So I have a memory of needing a pair of shorts to that fit and going to Target and getting a 24 okay. to button. Wow. And saying, nope, not buying it put it back, didn't buy it, wore my 22s that didn't fit mm. because it like, that was one of those moments where yeah. you're just like, nope, like, not going to do it. That yeah. was like red flag for me. And then yeah. I also have a memory of, okay, I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to go walk my dog. Okay. And like not being able to oh, um, no. walk that I wanted to do without being exhausted and hot and sweaty and miserable. And I'm sitting there going like, I used to play basketball. Like, yeah. Yeah. What are we doing here? How did I get so, to this point? Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of the impetus to lose the first like hundred, mm-hmm. gained it back with my pregnancy, went back to school to be a dietitian and do it the right way. Oh, and yeah. it took prepping and measuring your food post op is a beast all in itself. But Portion Perfection has actually made it super, super simple. They have bowls, plates, and even a lunch bag called the Kitten Carry where you can have all of the system ready to go. Yeah, we love carrying that thing around with Mm -hmm. us. It's so much easier to pack your lunch, your snacks, especially when you're on a road trip. That Mm -hmm. thing is a lifesaver. Yes. So if you want to get these things to help your journey, just go over to portionperfection.com and use our code 15 osl pod. And again, that's 15 OSL pod. And you can also go over to our Amazon storefront to pick out any of those that you would like to use. We found a company that was founded by a bariatric surgeon for his patients. Mm -hmm. He is just trying to make their lives easier. And so they have created a whole array of snacks and dinners and just all the foods you could possibly want that have protein in them and are delicious. Yeah. And they're so freaking good that we took them on tour with us because we tried them on a live. So you guys can always go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. And we liked every single bar. We were shocked. We don't want you guys to miss out. So go over to berrylife.com, use OSLP and get your discount. While we were in Florida, we got to visit one of our favorite bariatric surgeons, Dr. Donald Fridley at Surgical Associates of Bayonet Point. And when we say that they are patient focused, they are patient freaking focused. They tailor make all their plans to the unique needs of each patient. It's an in-body scanner. We both got to use it. We both got to use it. And you get to do it pre-op and post-op. So that way you can see all the differences and all the changes that happen. And he's also one of the surgeons that does his surgery with robotics. And we got to play with that We did. So we were so so excited. And we want you to have such a special care that they give. So go over to sabpweightloss.com right now. Or give their office a call at 727 819 nine one zero seven that's right so and tell them that the oslp girl sent you and they're going to take great care of you yeah three or four years Mm -hmm. to lose it again Mm -hmm. okay and i would every time i would get to 200 that 300 to 200 Mm -hmm. just bang my head against the wall Mm -hmm. and so like i'm a dietitian i'm working in a hospital i am just still no matter what i do banging my head against 200. Mm -hmm. I could diet down, you know, I could count the macros and Mm -hmm. do the diet and work out extra and like try to do all the things and get to like 190. Yeah. And then a fun weekend or a vacation, I was 205. Yep. Always fluctuates. Yep. Yep. And it was like, I know, obviously I had lost a hundred pounds with diet and exercise, but damn, was it hard. Mm -hmm. And it was even harder to keep it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't paying attention, I would just in a couple of weeks be 215 and then have to readjust and refocus. And like, mm. so through all of this, I shared it all online, right? I was on Instagram sharing yeah. my life, sharing my kids, sharing my food, sharing my workouts. And like, thank God I did because that was just that level of accountability mm-hmm. that I needed yeah. where like, if I didn't show up for like a week, people would be messaging me like, yeah. hey, you okay? what's up? Where are you going? Mm. And then I'd resurface and be like, yeah, it's been rough. I've been eating everything. I haven't worked out. It's time to regroup. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. And people get it. Like yeah. 
the struggle of dieting is yeah. that it's really difficult and really hard and rarely sustainable. Yeah. And maintenance is sometimes just as hard and just as challenging as the weight loss in mm-hmm. the first place. Yes. yes. So, I almost believe I, that maintenance is actually one of the hardest things because, hard. because like, yeah, we can drop the weight and get there, but to stay there is yeah. insanely well, hard. hard. And you're not getting the gratification of losing mm-hmm. weight anymore. So now it's a mental so thing. So now it's mental because you're like, am I like, do I need to continue? Do I need to stay here? What do I need to do? There's a whole lot. There's a whole nother process to maintaining Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people don't understand. Or I I know for me, I didn't understand. Yeah. Like you're willing to sacrifice for the weight loss. Uh And this is a question I ask a lot is, can you eat like this for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Most people, most diets are like, heck no, I do not want to eat like that for the rest of my life. Yeah. And it's like, well, then you shouldn't how are you going to maintain yeah. mm-hmm. if that was how you lost. Yeah. Right. That's a learning experience in and of itself. Right. Mm-hmm. But so I was at 200 banging my head against the wall, working in the hospital. Uh, for a time I worked with Dr. Fridley Yay. when he was in bariatric surgery. Um, and I even had the thought cross my mind. And I, I had this conversation with Dr. Fridley because he's just so sweet and so approachable mm-hmm. and like this. He got it. Like, I felt like he just really got yeah, it. Right? Yeah, he does. So my BMI is like 33. If I gain 20 pounds to meet the qualifications for my health insurance, mm-hmm. would you do a gastric sleeve on me? Yeah. Like that is where I was just banging my head against the wall yeah. of I'm never going to get to where I want to be. Mm-hmm. Cause 200 was fine. Like, great, fine. I convinced myself that like, I look good, felt good, moved. Mm-hmm. Okay. Went to the gym, but like it was still 16, 18 in pants. Mm-hmm. Like still couldn't still didn't love, like didn't love, yeah. right? you know, yeah. and then I was starting to get older mm-hmm. and hypertensive and I was getting GERD and I had a hiatal hernia Ooh. and it was like all of these little health things were starting to creep mm-hmm. up as I got older as they do as they do. And I'm like, I don't want to be on blood pressure medication. Yeah, no. I don't, I was working in the hospital through COVID oh, and wow. then there was fear mongering about like, does being overweight increase your risk of yeah. getting COVID? And I'm like literally in the hospital with these patients. Like I was scared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be it too. was like so frustrating and almost embarrassing to a point to like be a registered dietitian mm-hmm. and people were coming to me for help. And I could help them be successful, but I like struggled to help my own self Mm -hmm. be successful. And that really messes with your confidence Mm -hmm. and your, like, I know I'm smart. I know I'm well accomplished. I have a great family. I've got little kids. Like I'm a good mom. I can do it all. I just can't freaking lose this weight. Right. 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 And we hear that actually a lot from dietitians. Yeah. They always feel guilty Mm -hmm. if they're overweight at all because they're like, how can I tell someone when to eat if I can't even handle it? Yeah. Well, and like even hard to be a bigger dietitian. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and even for for when I was gaining, I was actively gaining for my regain. And it's very hard to be in a spot where we talk about being healthy. We talk about all these things on what to do for your bariatric surgery, but I couldn't stop eating. I could not stop eating. And it was like, what was the point of changing my mindset of getting help was we, I actually cried because I had never admitted on the podcast. I thought that nobody could see, (laughs) you could see that I was gaining weight. I wanted to pretend like if I sat down and I was like this and in all black that you couldn't see the weight gain. And it, I actually cried on an episode Mm -hmm. and I started therapy and I started asking for help. But something that was so hard for me to admit that I was gaining was because I am in a spot where we help people. And so how can I help people? How can I say that I'm successful if I'm not successful in my own journey? It's the saying of those that can't do teach. Yes. 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 For sure. It was so hard being a bigger dietitian. And I almost sometimes would have to like prove like, hey, I used to be 300. I would go on Instagram. But you're big. What do you what do you mean? You're why are you your dietitian? You're big. And I'd be like, oh, but look, I used to be 300 pounds. Yeah. So like 200 pounds. It's like a win. I was super proud of you had where to justify I had. it. But it was like, why, why should I have to do that? Mm-hmm. I can tell you that as I've lost weight, 
finally now we can talk about like the journey recently, but yes. like I still pick up some extra shifts on the weekends at my hospital mm-hmm. that now that I work from home for sequence, but I work at the hospital some weekends. The doctors and the nurses treat me totally different now that I'm smaller. Oh, there's a bias. More, oh, you're the dietitian and they believe me. Like there's right. And it was such a I I have memories of not so nice physicians in the hospital settings who looked at me like you're the dietitian. I'm like, yeah, I'm the dietitian. I can do tube feeds for your very sick patient, no matter what size I am. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you're uh, like, I can come up that, with a program for them too. Like it doesn't, yeah, it's like that weight stigma. Like if you've ever had a diabetes educator who has diabetes, like who, who's better to teach right. that program? Yeah. Like I know the struggles, like my clients that I would work with in my like small business on the side would be like, you get it. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like, yeah. this is not easy. And I would have so many people who would say that they've gone to a dietitian super nervous because I think the dietitian just doesn't understand how hard it is to be overweight, to lose weight, to eat better, to live in this body, to live in this world. That's so unkind mm-hmm. to bigger people. They are so and unkind. people would almost be, it would be twofold. You would get people that were like, super disappointed that I was bigger mm-hmm. because they'd be like, well, you're not going to be able to help me because you can't help yourself, mm-hmm. which is just their own stigma yep. you know, bias. They got to work with that on their own. Yeah. And then you would get people that were like, so relieved. And they're like, okay, you're not going to judge me. Yep. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to judge you. Mm-hmm. Like we're in this together. We live in this world that just makes it really dang hard to maintain a normal weight mm-hmm. if you have chronic obesity. 100%. Well, and I feel like as a patient, we're so scared to being being judged by our doctors and dietitians mm-hmm. because like, we're like, we got here. Sorry. Can you help us? Yeah. Like, don't be mean yeah. to us because we're big because we're used to people being mean to us because we're big. It happens all the fucking yeah, time. It does. Like, yeah. it's not just in the medical world. Like, even just walking down the street, people are fucking rude. <laughs> they are rude, rude. And they won't look you in the eye. They won't nope. smile. Like, I always make sure that no matter what who I'm coming in contact with, I'm smiling at them Mm -hmm. no matter what weight, because sometimes it's it as a plus size person, it's very nice to have somebody look up and see you and smile because we, we are constantly being hidden. And I'm sure you felt that in the hospital setting. It was so hard. There's, we would take a team photo every year of all the dietitians that worked at this really big hospital. And I've got all those pictures and I'm just, so clearly the biggest person oh. on this dietitian team. Yeah. And I would work in this office. I love them to death. Sweetest people I've ever met. Really awesome team. But like, they're the type of people who could bring crumble cookies mm. and have the one little triangle. Oh, whatever. And, and be so excited to share with everyone else. Yeah. And I would be like, kind of making sure nobody's watching me, like take a whole freaking cookie. Yeah. 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 Cause that's, I, what I that's my, that's my, and I learned this over the years. I never had a name for it. I just thought I just struggled with my weight or had mm-hmm. a problem with food. Mm-hmm. And it's really been over the past couple of years, thanks to like Dr. Spencer and then folks in this obesity medicine world yeah, who have put language to this problem that I have, mm-hmm. which is that I have a disease of chronic obesity. Yes. Like I have appetite dysregulation. Yes. What is that exactly? Can you explain? And my chronic disease of obesity follows the same pattern that a lot of diseases do Mm -hmm. in that they're progressive. They get worse over time. They are uh, relapsing as in you can treat them for a short period of time. But then if you don't maintain the behaviors and the the tools, it comes back. Mm -hmm. It's relapsing. And it's just freaking relentless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is just... Obesity is a disease. Obesity is not a bad word. I know that we've got a lot of debate in the space Mm -hmm. about fat phobia and whether it's a disease. And yes, you can be healthy at any size, but the science is pretty clear that excess adipose tissue on a human body to a degree starts to have consequences. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to explain to people it's almost like diabetes. Once you have it, you can't reverse it. And there are people out there, charlatans and zealots, that'll be like, I can treat, you know, we can cure your diabetes with some crazy restrictive, right, program. And it's like, 
I still want to live my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, there's that side where like, yes, excess adipose tissue is causing damage to my body, but also food is tasty. And I want to go out to dinner with my family Mm -hmm. and I want to be able to celebrate Thanksgiving with my favorite foods. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to move through life, not having to obsess Mm -hmm. over keeping this weight off. Right. Yep. And so where's, where do we get the balance? Like, how do we negotiate between, I want to treat my body well, and I want to take care of it. So I want to manage my weight, but I also don't want to have like a eating disorder. Yeah. 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 Cause it will become one very quickly. Where's this healthy space in between? Yeah. And then, you know, it's, we get so gaslighted because Mm -hmm. there are people that like don't have the chronic disease of obesity. Mm-hmm. They just like gained 20 pounds during COVID because they were sitting at home and drinking alcohol every night or something like, right. They had this yeah. like, event that helped them gain 20 pounds and they did the diet and they lost the weight. So like, why can't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh, cause right. my chem- body chemistries might be a little bit different. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, or it's like but these people and I, and, you know, I'm not to discount their struggle, but like women who gain weight postpartum Mm -hmm. or have a baby gain weight for the first time in their life, they're a little bit bigger than they always were because they have this pregnancy. Right. Right. And they go on a weight loss journey and they eat well and they exercise and they lose the weight and they go back to their set point Mm -hmm. and really proud of them. That's hard work. Like that was great for Mm -hmm. them. Good job. Yep. But that was the chronic disease of obesity. No. That a lot of us struggle with. Well, and I think they, they can easily go back to like, it's hard work. It's hard work to get back in that mindset, eat the foods that you want. But when you feel that uncontrollable urge to eat and you don't want the healthy items, I was eating a nutty bar sometimes three days, three times a day. Yeah. And it was always in secret. And I felt like I could just keep eating whatever was in me. like crumble cookies. I feel you on the crumble cookies. I found them, I don't know, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was like a switch flipped and I wanted all the crumble cookies and my boyfriend's daughters. They love them, too. They would go and buy the big box and the box would sit on the counter. They have no problem walking by those cookies and just discounting them. I don't know how they do that. I would go out probably mm-hmm. six or seven times and have a little triangle each time. Mm-hmm. But that equals to one cookie. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I was eating uncontrollably. And um, then you beat yourself up and you're like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I control yes. myself? What? Mm-hmm. Why do I have this problem? And it's it's our freaking brains. Like yep. it's who we are. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. And it's not like a character flaw. It's no. literally your biology. Yep. Well, and I wanted not to biology. touch. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm saying, I just want to touch base on the pregnancy one too, because I was, as my doctor put it, when I got pregnant with my kid, at, I was 18, but they're like, you're already fluffy. So we don't want you gaining much weight. Yeah. Which That's you what, didn't really. I didn't really. Um, But it didn't take until after surgery to me to get down to what I was prior to being pregnant. Yeah. Like I only gained like 25 pounds with, with Dylan, but also like I lost it and then I gained like yeah, crazy steadily. afterwards. Yep. Like <laughs> after the first year of having him, I was like gaining like a, like, well, how old was he? 10 when you had surgery? So I'm hitting my eight years. So he was nine. He was nine. He was nine years old. So literally it took over nine years for me to get back to what I was postpartum. And it's wild because like now I'm actually, I think I'm, I'm actually the same size as when I got pregnant now. It might be really? actually smaller. Yeah, you're smaller. I think I'm smaller now, yeah. actually. So it's Isn't freaking it wild. crazy when you grow up struggling with your weight, but you can tell people exactly how much you weigh and what size mm-hmm. clothes you wore at every single major event and point in your life? Yep. 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 I could draw you a graph. Okay, when I got married, I was here. When I got divorced, I was here. When I got married again, I was here. When I had this baby, I was here. Like, mm-hmm. it's just those numbers just stick with us. Yeah. You know what? Naturally lean people don't know that. No, they don't even know the numbers. No, I don't even know. I can't tell you how many, like when I worked in the hospital, like elderly people that aren't from that generation that really cared yeah. about weight that much that are just never had obesity problems. Like a nice old dude in the hospital. You go, how much do you weigh? And they're like, I don't know. You're going to have to ask my wife when I went to the doctor six months ago, she'll know. <laughs> how much I've been. And yep. I'm like, how do you know? 
exactly how much you weigh every yep. single day yep. because yep. it's just a different mindset around weight. Yep. And I've always been to those people. I, I envy them too, yeah, man. Yeah, I know I'm at 169.8. Yeah. Like that, I know the uh, the point after. Okay. Like it's not even just 169 or rounding up to 170. I know I'm at 169.8 because okay. it is so important to me to know because I think that I will attribute part of my regain to that problem is I did not step on the scale. Yes. I got, I was in the middle of a divorce and I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to, I don't want to know right now. Fuck it. I'm not going to step on it. That's a future Kelly problem. And I I really was step on it for a while. And then when I went to the, um, the, uh, uh, ear, nose and throat doctor. Mm -hmm. And they had me step on the scale. And I told Mel, I was like, I weighed in at 218. Yeah. 218. And I was like, nope, this is not happening. This is not happening. And I tried to justify it with like, oh, it's the middle of the day. I already drank my water, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, that's like a couple pounds, girl. That's not, that's not what you just gained. So I was like, I've gained back, I gained back 65 pounds. Yep. And so But I knew I like that's the I can pinpoint standing in the ear, nose and throat doctor, getting on the scale, seeing the 218 and knowing exactly what was happening in that moment of time. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah. So wild. Yeah. So when was the point that you got on to GLP ones? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let's start like sequence. Let's see. Yeah. Tell us how you got on the the journey. Yes. Yes. Okay. So working in the hospital, registered dietitian, banging my head against the wall at 200 pounds. Yes. Running, lifting, doing all the things, counting all the macros, couldn't get below 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Finally had my hiatal hernia repaired. Okay. And now I could really eat. Oh. (laughs) No reflux. So I had like terrible GERD that like was honestly helping me not gain weight. Yeah. Right. Like this hernia GERD situation. Yeah. Got that repaired. Okay. And then like food was amazing. Yeah. Mm. And I could really eat. And I was like, so hungry all the time. Interesting. And through all this process for years, I've been like Twitter friends with Dr. Spencer. Oh, that's okay. so funny. Right. So like meme doctor, hilarious, mm. really reasonable. Like I, my favorite meme is the one where he's like, diet starter kit and it's the rotisserie chicken the bag salad the microwave rice right like just the fruit cup like yeah diet yeah. Starter kit. like that is how I think about nutrition I've always been very like reasonable and realistic mm-hmm. and I ain't putting anybody on like an organic ridiculous super perfect love you for that <laughs> well, seriously expensive ass for no reason diet yeah right like I should go to Walmart like that no yeah so I always appreciated his approach and I think he's hilarious mm-hmm. on Twitter because he just fights all these idiots who say stupid stuff about nutrition. Yes. I love it. And out. So he and I would be on Twitter, nutrition, Twitter, fighting all the same people. Okay. And so he was talking a lot over last summer about GLP ones and his new company at sequence mm-hmm. and just sharing what really got to me was when he would share members like testimony about how their relationship with food change after starting a GLP-1 medication. Okay. okay. So for people who don't know, GLP-1 is a GLP-1 agonist medication, which works in several ways. One of them being like delaying gastric emptying. So it keeps you fuller longer. Mm-hmm. Okay. It also reduces appetite. So it keeps the reward center of your brain calmer. Okay. okay. So you're not craving and looking for food all the time. I can attest and for at that. At the same time, it helps with like insulin resistance, PCOS type symptoms, which I think I kind of deal with too. Yeah. And so he would talk about how he would have these people, these patients who would say things like they can stick to their diet now without blowing it mm-hmm. on Donut Dan who brings donuts to work. Yep. Donut and Dan. so that was always my problem is like, I know exactly how I wanted to eat. Mm-hmm. I knew exactly what to eat. I had the plan. Mm-hmm. I could meal plan. I could grocery shop. I could cook. I could write, you know, I could write it all out in five minutes. It's literally my job. This is what I do for a living. Like I know how to help people lose weight, mm-hmm. but I could never adhere to my best intentions mm-hmm. okay. for more than a couple of weeks. Okay. 
And somebody's going to be like, well, you were dieting too hard or you're in too much of a deficit or you were over restricting. No, yeah, I was flexible. I had wiggle room. I had just the right calorie deficit figured out that would help me lose a half a pound per week. I was not crash dieting. I was not overly restricting to where I would binge. Like I had that stuff. I had done years of work. Yeah. To yeah. That. Like figured that out. I was good. Like I could tell, I could have a slice of pizza and the world didn't come to an end. And okay. I was still on a plan and I knew how to count those macros. And like, I was good, but that only lasted for three or four weeks. And then it was like the cookie guy would come and then the, we'd go out to somebody's birthday mm-hmm. and I just couldn't stick to it. Yep. And I would have eaten, I used to say this, I could eat the biggest, most delicious, nutritious meal. Mm-hmm. That was so satisfying. Like my favorite foods, it could have been a nice, hefty serving of potatoes and salmon and lots of veggies with tons of flavor and like loved it, right? Mm-hmm. Full belly. Mm-hmm. And then if my kids left a cookie or a chicken tender on their plate, I was eating it. Yep. And then I was opening the pantry to like, see what could I have for dessert? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Physically full, nourished, met my macros, which were big, like doing all the things that should have been working to control my appetite. Mm -hmm. And yet swiping chicken nuggets. Yeah. My old freaking chicken nuggets that weren't even that good <laughs> right what is up with that I will still my s- do that my shit child. yeah and I was still eat like who does like and I didn't have language to explain what I was going through until mm-hmm. I started reading what Dr. Spencer and others were posting about this chronic disease of obesity and I literally had this oh shit moment where I was like well that's me yeah mm-hmm. that's me that's what I have that's my problem mm-hmm. yeah yep And so I went to sign up for sequence, did the little survey, chickened out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Sat on it for like a month. I was like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to count the macros. I'm going to diet. Couldn't stick to it. Gaining weight, appetite cute. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I signed up for sequence. At first I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody. Like, Mm -hmm. this is great. I was dealing with that. Like self-stigma, shame, like, mm-hmm. you know, all this crap that people are fear-mongering about on yeah. the internet about like Ozempic or GLP-1s yep. or whatever are a quick fix. Yep. And it's like, people are going to judge me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sitting there going like, yeah, but if I get skinny and I don't tell my followers how I finally did it, yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to disown me for lying to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not okay, man. Got to be transparent. So, I, and that was my thing is I've always online. I've been authentic and transparent. If you don't like me, like, cool. Like we don't have to be. You are so our person. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Samesies. Yep. (laughs) Like I got my family. I got my friends. We're online friends. If you don't like me, like, please don't tell me you're unfollowing. Just go away. Yeah. Yeah, Just just do it. You don't need to tell me. Just step away. Yes. Anyways. But I have people that I have been like literally sharing my life on Instagram for like 12 Mm -hmm. years. Like people who remember my first pregnancy people who have been there with me and supported me through like my postpartum depression and my divorce and my new marriage and like followed my life. And I, that struggle with weight in the same way I do. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had to say something. Yeah. So I like sat on the floor and made like a whole bunch of stories. Like, okay, so I signed up for this weight management program and I'm going to start taking a GLP-1 medication. And I'm going to tell you about it because I tell you about everything and here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it was literally life changing. It is the biggest, most important decision I've ever made in my life to start this. Wow. Medication. wow. I, I fully, truly believe that. I agree with you so, from, yeah. from my point standpoint, it was the exact same. Like I yeah. can look back and be like, I finally have brain space away from the constant struggle of trying to not eat. Yeah. It's incredible. It, mm-hmm. It's so wild. The experience was wild. So I'm still working at the hospital full time, okay. clinical dietitian in the hospital. And, but I'm Twitter friends with Spencer. I take my first injection. The next day, I'm driving to work and I get to work and I go to take a drink of my Starbucks cup that I forgot to stop for. Wow. So every single morning on the way to the hospital, I, have a, I had a 45 minute commute. It was terrible. So I would treat myself 
pretty much every single freaking morning to a latte and some sort of food item from Starbucks. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Automatic. Yeah. And didn't even think about it. Automatic Mm -hmm. habit had done it for years. And then I would always not drink it because it was always too hot until Mm -hmm. I got to my desk. And it was like a treat when I'm logging in, I would drink my coffee and I went to drink my coffee and it wasn't freaking there. (gasps) Oh, wild. And Mm -hmm. I tweeted Spencer and I said, I freaking forgot to go to Starbucks. (laughs) (laughs) You don't understand, but that's a big moment. That's a big fucking (laughs) deal. Oh my God. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Yeah. Like just mind blown. Right. And so I worked at this hospital that had an amazing cafeteria. And I remember I was not a very good planner. I started my medication. I didn't plan anything. I just, I'm a dietitian. I know how to eat. I don't need any extra like plan or information or anything. Right. I read all, you know, sequences stuff and I'm like, okay, I got it. And I walked through the cafeteria for lunch, having not eaten breakfast, Mm -hmm. walked through the cafeteria for lunch and all these foods that I used to just gravitate towards the tater tots, the cookies, the giant chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Like I remember having this like visceral reaction to the smell of the fried foods. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And being like, Ugh. Mm -hmm. interesting. And I, I was freak. I was so freaky. It was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. And I was like, holy shit. I don't want tater tots. Yeah. (laughs) This is the first time ever. I love that you and Kelly I both love tater tots. Breakfast. Yeah, I do. I love tater tots. She does. Like I hadn't eaten breakfast. I should have been freaking starving. starving. Yep. And I think I left that day with like a piece of chicken on a salad mm-hmm. because I knew I needed to eat. And I was like, huh. And I ate it and I was like, this is pretty good. Okay, cool. And I went about my work day and I like wasn't even thinking about food. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I remember that first week being like super productive at work killing it yeah. in my paid sessions. Mm-hmm. Like my workouts felt amazing. I was just like bright and awake and alert. And like, it there. was so cool. It was there. Yeah. And then this is the best part. Okay. The first time my husband and I, we live in Florida. We have a ton of like outdoor breweries that we love. That was our thing. Yeah. Love these breweries have these big open spaces. We have little kids, let the kids run around drink a beer or whatever. Yeah. It was like our weekend thing. And I would get pretty toasty. Like I like a good drink. And I remember getting my husband just bringing me my usual drink, my beer, craft beer that I would normally drink. And I would normally drink pretty fast, keep up with him, whatever, and nursed it. And it was like drinking like this much of it. And he was like, isn't that hot? Like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't think I want to drink. He's like, "What what do you mean? What's wrong with you? I was like, are you feeling okay? Are you sick? Like what's wrong? I'm like, no, I just don't think I want to drink. Okay. And I was super present, super attentive to my kids, mm-hmm. enjoyed his company, mm-hmm. relaxed in a social setting, which I'm not usually mm-hmm. like, I usually feel like I have to have a couple drinks to like chill out when it's mm-hmm. like stressy like that. And literally ever since I've started taking my GOP one medication, I can go to those sort of party environments mm-hmm. and nurse one drink. Maybe if I even break, it's not even worth it sometimes and like not get drunk and not be in that weird, you know, that weird mindset where you have to like drink a couple to get a buzz, to be comfortable. And that was me with alcohol. And ever since I started my GLP-1, I'm like, could take it or leave it. That's awesome. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's all within the first week before I had even like realized I was losing any weight. Yeah. So like, even if I never lost a single pound on my GLP-1 medication, I think it would have been worth it to be taking it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just that feeling sounds incredible because it reminds me of the, the first year of having sleeve surgery mm-hmm. where I felt more awake, more present, didn't care about mm-hmm. any sugary things, didn't care about like the fries, none of that. Like mm-hmm. wasn't drinking alcohol, not a thing. Yeah. Like, so it reminds me of that first year where I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I remember that first couple of weeks after I started taking Manjaro. Mm-hmm. I told Mel, I was like, I feel clear. I feel like I have more brain space to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Right. You don't realize how much you think about food mm-hmm. until you're no longer thinking about food. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, what's crazy is I tell, I tell people this all the time. I think if I didn't have to talk about food all day with people, cause I'm a dietitian and mm-hmm. I work with members, 
I really would never think about food. Yeah. Yeah. I have to set timers to remind me to eat because I yeah. honestly, I just forget. I yeah, forget she that I eat sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes Mel will make stuff and she just is like, take a couple bites. Like just yeah, yesterday. You need to eat. Oh no, Monday. I was like, yeah, just, here we had a sandwich. Just yep. take a few bites. Yep. We'll share the sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and there was actually when we were in New Orleans in the week prior, I actually couldn't get my Manjaro filled because there was none in the area. And so I actually had two weeks where I was off of it. And it was like night and day. Because if you think back, like I was not as accomplished with my day to day Mm -hmm. things. I was extra irritable. I wanted food all the time. I have not ordered a dessert or anything. Like usually I'm like, eh, it's fine. I don't need it. And when we were in New Orleans, we ended up ordering cookies. We did. And it wasn't crumble cookie. It was not crumble cookie. It It was was, homemade. Equally delicious. Delicious cookies. But I ate them all. Yeah. And wow, that's yeah. not like me. Like normally now I will have one and then I feel I feel satisfied. And I don't think I have ever felt satisfied by food. Your description of eating the most satisfying meal that you have ever had and then searching the cupboards to see what else, that's me. That was me yeah. before. Yeah, I can totally relate with that feeling. And I didn't know. I thought it was a willpower issue. I thought that I just couldn't get like get enough from myself that I, I just, yeah, willpower. And then when it's like, no, it's like, it's my brain. I, yeah. So I even, yeah, I even went through a phase where I was like, maybe it's because I'm counting calories and I'm dieting. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to give these intuitive eating people a chance. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to give myself permission to eat all the things and take mm-hmm. them off a pedestal and stop restricting and just, right. I gained 20 pounds so freaking fast. Yep. yep. I was like, okay. I get it. Like my relationship with food is super fun and nice, but like (laughs) for the sake of, I'm not, I don't want to regain this weight. Right. Yeah. 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 So it just wasn't going to work. It didn't work for me. And that's not to say that these sort of tools can't work for other people. Correct. But like for me, nothing has worked like my GLP-1 medication. I would totally agree. I am a total advocate that if you feel uncontrollable if you feel like you cannot get satisfied by food if you are feeling like you your willpower is at a zero like get a hold of sequence get a hold of your provider get a hold of somebody because this and this medication is just life-changing it's absolutely mind-blowing and life-changing and what's crazy too is like so i've lost i've lost all the weight i want to lose i'm like i've been eight months on my medication Two months in, meanwhile, I've been blowing up Spencer's Twitter like the whole time. <laughs> Every time I have a cool experience where I'm like, wow, wow, wow. I just like tell Spencer. And then one day I was like, I had like a really hard day at the hospital or something. My commute was ridiculous. I think I was stuck in traffic traffic for like two hours. Oh my God. I tweeted Spencer and I said, is sequence hiring? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, actually we are. Send me your resume. And I did. And then like two weeks later, here I am. Wow. Wow. Working from home, part of this amazing team of dietitians at Sequence. Everyone is incredible. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of have this same nutrition philosophy of obesity is a chronic disease. Mm -hmm. It is not your fault. It's not a lack of willpower. You're not Mm -hmm. stupid. Most people who come to us know exactly pretty much how they should be eating. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of let's work through the options and support you on this journey Mm -hmm. and make sure you're eating enough, which is like so fun to help make sure people are eating enough instead of taking things away. Yeah. It's like a different kind of weight management counseling. It is. Like we've all been to that like dietitian visit where they're like, well, you really need to cut out this and cut Mm -hmm. out that. Right. People on GLP ones, because of the appetite suppression being so strong, most of our counseling is like, okay, we need you to add a food here and you're going to add a snack here. Mm -hmm. And we need you to, you got to get a protein shake in your life. Like we, and it's so fun because it's like so encouraging and just Mm -hmm. always the sessions just feel so positive and people leave with a plan and hope Mm -hmm. and just success because these medications are so freaking powerful. Like, yeah accidentally lose weight sometimes, you know? Yeah. And like, we want to make sure people are doing this. Our job as dietitians at Sequence is to make sure that people are going through this and maintaining a healthy body and a healthy mind. Yeah. 
don't want people over restricting. We don't want people being on, on a GLP-1 medication and maybe post-bariatric surgery and additionally on some sort of diet. Mm -hmm. Like we just want to make sure that you're meeting your protein goals and that you're staying hydrated and that you're getting the micronutrients that you need. So your hair stays great and you feel good. And the amount of people that I tell, like, no, honey, you, you do need some carbohydrates. <laughs> like, I'm sure. Okay. Mm. Please eat some carbohydrates. You'll feel better. Yep. They're like carbs are bad. I was like, I'm mm. not telling you to go eat a candy bar. I'm saying like a half a cup of rice on your plate would be like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the conversations that we have. Like a sandwich is great. A wrap is great. It doesn't always have to be a salad. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's super fun. And then Sequence was like, hey, you do some social media stuff. You want to make some videos? I was like, yes. Oh, Absolutely. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And so I've become like this little dietitian, spokesperson, social media person at Sequence, which is hilarious because at my hospital job, I would get in trouble for posting things like, oh, that's oh funny. really? That's really I, funny. I, I, oh, it was such a terror. Like through COVID, I got in trouble like twice for bitching about COVID and how terrible it was and how sick everybody was. And like, people are like, they know where you work. You can't, put, you can't talk about how bad it is. Um, everybody um, knows how bad it is. I'm sure it's a free country and I can. <laughs> Just saying. I know, but like the healthcare workers were really getting like, I we bet. were really getting like, talking to's about what we say on social media and what we share and, and all of that was really rough. And it was like, but this is my side business. I'm talking about my life. I'm not, you yeah. know, and so it's just so weird to work for a company that's like, Hey, you want to make a podcast? You want to make an Instagram video? You yeah. want to run up ed? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I was going to say sequence, um, literally was the most seamless and has been the most seamless provider. I've ever been like, it, it was so easy to sign up. It was so easy to pick whatever plan. And then to go from there and know that I don't have to fight for the medication I need. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's huge. How many that people was are so hearing, trying to like right now, trying to go to like their PCPs or their bariatric surgeon mm -hmm. or whatever. And they're like, yeah. I think I need this medication. I'm hearing great things about it. I think this is me. Yeah. I identify with this person that has chronic obesity. I think this medication will help me with my regain. Yep. Please prescribe it for me. And then how many people are getting turned away from a their lot. A lot, a lot. Providers. Yep. And they're being told the crap they've heard over and over again. Let's go back to your diet plan, eat your protein, get working out, start walking. And you're like, no, you don't understand. I'm doing all those things. Yes. And still struggling with my weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, we, you're not going to, you don't come to sequence and we say, well, have you tried dieting and exercise? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, like, no, I think we've heard that enough over our life. Like our yeah. average, our average member that signs up, um, has done like, we, we take intake, you know, remember the intake quiz yep. we asked, like, how many programs have you done? What have you mm -hmm. done? We list all of the commercial programs yep. and themes and all Almost every member has checked almost every box. Yeah, wow. I checked almost every box. That's wild. Yeah. So I do have a couple of questions about yeah. sequence itself. So when some, I know Kelly went through it, but I'd like for you to kind of like walk through the steps. So when sure. we go to, if someone goes to sequence, how does it work exactly? Yeah, cool question. So you go to joinsequence.com mm -hmm. and there's a quiz. So it's kind of, everybody will remember like when you were signing up, getting your bariatric surgery, you had to meet certain criteria. Yes. So to qualify to join sequence, you have to have a current BMI greater than 30 mm -hmm. okay. or 27 or greater with a documented provable weight related comorbidity. Okay. Mm. So if you have a BMI of 27 and a history of diabetes and hypertension or PCOS, or pre-diabetes, some sort of fatty liver, some sort of weight-related condition that you have like your annual PCP note that has that diagnosis on it, mm -hmm. or you have labs that prove like A1C over 6.5, then you can have a lower BMI range. You can be okay. at a BMI. And so those are just the FDA kind of requirements for prescribing these medications. But okay. Sequence is not prescribing GLP-1 medications to people who do not have documented obesity. Yes. 
So I want to make that clear. Yeah. There's places you can go and get like some whatever. Sure. Surgeon. Remember people, that's what was told. Like they're not giving it out to those that don't need it. Yes. This so is not a celebrity thing where yes. you can just go in and grab and get it and just stop eating. Right? That, so that's not what we're this not is talking. For. We're not talking about vanity weight. Yeah. We're yeah. talking so about the- you have a chronic disease of obesity. Yeah. I like that you called it it called it that vanity weight. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to remember that one. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, I think I stole that from some like magazine piece or whatever, well, but I love yeah, it. no, it's like, there's a difference between needing to lose 60 pounds to get a handle on your blood pressure mm-hmm. and wanting to lose 15 pounds for a wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. There's a hell of a Those are very different strategies, scenarios, mm-hmm. situations, both are valid, like cool. Yeah. It's your body. You do what you want with it. Yeah. But like, we're talking about treating obesity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you sign up, you do the quiz you meet the criteria, you do the intake quiz, which asks you about your dieting history, mm-hmm. your conditions, the quiz. It's real quick, like five minutes. Yeah, it was, okay. it did not take long at all to do yep. it. And then you get connected with a clinician in that's licensed in your state. Mm-hmm. So for some people who are in states that have a lot of clinicians, you might get a super quick visit. Some might be a few days out. Okay. Um, and you can choose depending on your state to have either a video visit with your clinician, like face-to-face on telemedicine or a chat visit mm-hmm. with your clinician where you talk in the chat. Okay. So it really depends on the state and if you have labs and there's some sun and rules about that, but when you sign up, we'll make that super clear what applies to you. Yeah. So you meet with your clinician, your clinician helps you kind of understand if you even qualify, if these are a good fit for you, if they're safe for you, they go through your medical history, share some information with you, and then you pick a treatment plan. So whichever GLP-1 medication either you want or we think that you'll get insurance approval for the best, mm-hmm. and we write a prescription and submit a, a PA on your behalf to your insurance company to assist you with getting coverage if possible, if not, we can direct you towards like manufacturer coupons, mm-hmm. whatever's available for that particular medication mm-hmm. that works for you. Okay. That's the crappy part, unfortunately, where people just can't be members with us because their insurance freaking sucks mm-hmm. and doesn't cover anything. And then the out of pocket cost is mm-hmm. pretty ridiculous for yeah. some of these medications. Yeah. And we know that. And that is unfortunate. We will can write you the prescription or more than welcome to let you cash pay. But most people just really can't afford that. Yeah, yeah. it's very so expensive. Part of what we're doing on our social media advocacy side is working with folks to get better insurance coverage. So we can help you write a letter to your HR department. We can help you apply um, if your PA gets denied and we think that you have a really strong case, we can help you with an appeal on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Um, but because we have so many members and so much experience and we literally have been doing obesity medicine and insurance for so many people, we have a pretty good idea if your insurance plan is just good or bad. Like, and we're going to be upfront and honest with you because we don't want to waste your time. Like if if you have a plan exclusion that doesn't cover any obesity medicines, unfortunately, like there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. And I think though, there's hope. I think that these medications are proving to be so safe and so effective and so amazing that, and the public demand is so strong that I think the insurance companies are going to come along eventually and start covering these better. Yeah. Um, But so everybody's a little different. Your medical conditions may make a stronger case for you getting coverage than others. Your weight, the severity of your obesity may make a difference, you know, um, depending on your plan. So we help you through that process. We hope that you get to the pharmacy and you pick up your prescription and you can afford it. Yes. And then you're in and you're good to go and you get access to all the lessons. So we have lessons Mm -hmm. plans that talk about nutrition, but also fitness, sleep, stress, the medications, just lessons. Um, And those are written like bloggy kind of click through tool within the platform. And then you have a chat with a care manager who is like your person. Okay. So you get a person who's assigned to you to be like your navigator through, it's kind of like a bariatric navigator, I think, kind of yeah. role to kind of like point you in the right direction, get in touch with your doctor for you, get in touch with your dietitian for you, bring everybody to the chat. 
Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Who needs to be there? Send you resources. Send you information to answer questions. Nice. Um, within the platform, we have you log your weight, your side effects. Um, we clinicians check in with you regularly. You can check in with your clinician whenever you want. You have a random question at 2 a.m. You can send a chat and when they log in, they'll see your message and get back with you. Mm-hmm. Um, turnaround times like a day or two mm-hmm. for most, um, which is pretty freaking quick. That's I don't really know. Good. You guys, like, for me, it was doctor. like 12 hours, like nice. less than 12 yeah. hours. I have a reply. So That's it's really, really good. Quick. Very quick. How many times have you sent like a, my chat message to your provider? in like your doctor's office and it's like a week later they yep. finally get back to almost about, every like, time it's... that you already went to urgent care for yep right yeah. yep. Yep. anyway um so you have the chat support with your person your insurance navigator your clinician you can ask to meet with a registered dietitian we ask that you've been on your medications like a couple of weeks just so you can kind of like have something to go on and you know how you're feeling and and what you're gonna what you need from us because yeah. sometimes people take these medications and they're like have the experience like we had and yeah. we're like oh this is amazing i'm good now yeah and they don't really need us because they've done all the diets and they know how they're they want to eat and then we have people that are losing weight too fast because these medications are too good mm-hmm. and they need us to tell them to eat more mm-hmm. and then there are some people who are struggling a little bit to lose weight maybe as quickly as they had hoped mm-hmm. Usually they're losing weight like at just the right amount. Yeah. Because slow, slow and steady is like preferred because uh-huh. we want to keep you healthy and strong and feeling good. So sometimes these people are posting online that they're losing obnoxious amounts of weight week after week. And I'm just like, I'm really worried about them. Yeah. Like, how do you still have hair and muscles? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, right. So these medications are so powerful that we really want to keep you safe. Mm-hmm. So it's really important. And this is part of why, like, my social media like mission is to tell people that you have to eat three times a day. Yeah, yes. Kelly. Like, yeah. Did you hear that? that? And it's controversial. People are like, I yeah. cannot eat three times a day, but like, no, you need three meals and you need three servings of protein. <laughs> so uh, yes, I am hearing do you. you. Do you check in with your dietitian at sequence? No, I do. Not. Yeah. I, I think you might need to. So if Just you're a saying. sequence member, if yes. you're a sequence member and you need a dietitian visit, all you have to do is say in the chat, I need a dietitian and we'll send you the link and you can book a visit. Okay. I will do that. Good. Cause I think they need to check on you. You find yep. a therapist. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> We're agreements. Hey, it doesn't have to be one for one. I'm you just... need to just take care of you. And I've been concerned about you because you do not have three meals a day and you know, damn well, you fucking don't. <laughs> I at least still journal every fucking week. Okay. Okay. I do therapy shit. I go outside. I walk in the grass. I listen to music. I do my stuff. Only thing I don't have is a therapist. You're not eating three times a day and you're not drinking enough water. You're not getting enough protein. I am drinking enough water. I hit my water goal every single day. Okay. Well, at least you're getting water in, but you're not getting that protein in. I will work on it. And you know what you love the most? Your hair. So how about we make sure you don't lose your fucking hair? That's all I'm saying. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we talk about all of these things. Do you have social supports? Do you have a plan? Can you meal prep? Can you grocery shop? Do you have recipes? Do you need snack ideas? Do you need protein shake recommendations? Do you not tolerate your protein shakes and you need to try something else? Like we can totally help with all of those little nutrition questions. Like if you're confused or want to clarify, like that's what the dietitians are for. Okay. And if anything, we're really just there to be cheerleaders and make sure people are safe and having a good experience and have somebody they can talk to. You meet with a dietitian like monthly as much as you want, really. And it's all of this, all these services, the insurance, the care coordinator, every single time you talk to the clinician, your prescription, we have fitness plans too. We have strength plans. When's the last time you logged into your sequence account? Yeah, Kel. When I needed a refill. <laughs> okay, so next time you log in. Yes. So remember, I have a thing. You'll notice there used to only be three squares here. Now there's a fourth square and it's the fitness plans and you can download strength training fitness plans and they change every month and they have a calendar. And you guys know Justin, he's our fitness PhD fitness coach. Yeah. He's filmed himself doing every little move. And so you can watch a little YouTube video wow. of Justin doing all the workouts, which is just darling. And um, yeah, they're awesome. The strength training programs are great and they're super customizable. So we we ask you, 
Are you working out at home with no equipment? Do you have like, I just have like dumbbells um, or do you go to like a full gym? Mm. And then there's different plans for different kind of levels. And it's really cool. So we question. want everybody to be lifting weights. Yeah. So does that mean when you're on GLP ones, whatever the GLP one is, since I know there's like five billion of them. No, there's not five billion of them. There's but like five. There's like five. Five. There's five, not five billion. Um, so it is important to do some sort of like weight training yes. and fitness. Super important. So every weight loss effort of any kind has a risk of muscle mass loss, Mm -hmm. losing weight, dieting, being in a deficit, which by whichever method you get there, Mm -hmm. you're at risk for losing muscle loss, having muscle loss. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern long-term for just long-term longevity and health and strength and well-being, And then also like body composition, just how you actually look at your goal weight might be wildly different based on whether or not you strength train and have muscle mass or not. Okay. Right. So a lot of people, I hear a lot of people get frustrated. Like I'm at my goal weight, but I don't look like what I thought I would look like Mm. at my goal weight. And I was like, did you strength train? Cause that really makes a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say though, that I think there's a lot of hype right now in the media about the risk of muscle loss on GLP-1 medications. Mm-hmm. And I think they're, it's a little overblown because mm-hmm. I think the weight loss that co- the muscle loss that comes with weight loss is be- just because of the weight loss. Yeah. Yeah. It's inherent to, because it was done with a GLP-1. Well, and it happens with, with sleep, bariatric yeah. surgery. Like anyways. Anyways. It's comparable. It's very mm-hmm. comparable to what you see with bariatric surgery. Yeah. Okay. Cause we're, we're so, told to do straight, weight training. Yeah. Straight yeah. training right after too, yeah. because of muscle loss, because yeah. I've learned over the years that like your muscle mass is very important to your overall health. Yes. As you get older, especially like in your forties and fifties to be able to be flexible and malleable. And, you know, if you want to run around with your grandkids, you need those muscle masses there. Yes. So the more muscle you have, the better you will be able to metabolize and handle carbohydrate intake Okay. because you will be less insulin resistant. If you have more muscle, okay. Strength training and resistance training improves blood sugar independent of weight loss or what you eat. So strength training and muscles are super important for metabolic and health, regardless of whether or not it helps you lose any weight. To be honest, strength training is not for weight loss. Mm -mm. The diet and what you're eating is responsible for weight loss. Your exercise is to keep your body healthy through the process. Okay. So like, I don't care how many calories you burn in the gym. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like irrelevant to what you should be eating. Mm. It's great if you can do it on a consistent schedule. It might move the needle a hundred calories or so you might can get away with eating a little bit more, but it's not this like hugely significant factor in weight loss. However, it's super important for weight maintenance long-term. Okay. Oh, okay. For weight the maintenance. More, okay. The more muscle you have, the more you can eat at maintenance and maintain your weight. Oh, Ooh. okay. That's a good, that's a good driver for those that don't work out and yeah. Yes, I see you looking at me. I see it. I see it right if now. You, if you have to choose a, a workout type to engage in, like if you're short on time, you only have 20 minutes, three times a week, you should spend that time strength training, okay. not running or cycling or cardio or Zumba or whatever. If you, if you enjoy weight training now, yes. Forget what I said. If all you like is Zuma, please, by all means, just go do Zuma. Just do something. Right? Do something. Do yeah. something. Do something you enjoy. I love walking. I never thought I would like love walking. I love walking. But that's like not for weight loss. And it's not really for my fitness. It's more for just not being sedentary, which is the most important part. Yes. Is getting up and moving more often. Yes. And um, just the clarity and the mental health and like the movement and being outside and all of that is just so important for reasons unrelated to weight. Yeah, that's more like mental stuff too. Like yeah. going outside and just going on walks is so good for your mental health. Yeah, that's, being in the sun, being mm-hmm. in the fresh air, like yeah. that's that's so good for you. So I know a lot of questions we get is like, when do you stop taking GLP ones? Yeah, like, that's a cool. huge question. Yeah. So for every person, the conversation needs to be between them and their doctor. Okay. 
about what plan is going to work specifically for them Mm -hmm. when it comes to weaning down medication, if at all, and or coming off of it. Okay. We've already established that obesity is a chronic relapsing recurring time. It is a lifetime disease. Yes. So we're not losing the weight on the GLP-1 and then stopping the GLP-1 and expecting nothing to happen. Right. Right. Same like if you had bariatric surgery and then it was possible to put everything back where it came from Mm -hmm. and undo the surgery, you would gain back the weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think in the same way that like you start an antidepressant and you start feeling better, you don't just, okay, now I can stop my antidepressant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in, in that same way, I think it's important to know going in that for some people, these medications may need to be lifelong. Okay. And I think that's an important conversation to have with yourself about cost Mm -hmm. and access and, and those sort of things, Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of scary because so many people's insurance is like tied to their jobs. And then you're like, that's really crappy that somebody would like really be freaked out that like, they're not going to quit a crappy job because it pays for their GLP. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we hear that just for bariatric surgery. Yeah, because certain right they stick certain with their job until they go through the whole process. Because yeah. if they quit their job or they get fired, and they the have to start of, all over. Yeah, or over, like, oh, or it's not sick. even allowed. Like I know some some people that have been wanting bariatric surgery but can't because it's not even covered anymore. Yeah, but their job they've been like with, they for like a job. decade. But like they you know the the insurance yeah. plan changes almost every freaking year, and they x some things, add some things, mm-hmm. and it's always. It's never for the good of the person. I swear to God. It's It's, all money. It's all about greed. And it's so annoying. Unfortunately. And I that's the one thing I've always been on is like for insurance, it just should never be tied to your job. No. Yeah. At all. Like if we can get off that, that'd be great. Like if we can just start there. Yeah. Just start there, please. Yeah. Start there and then we'll move forward with the GLP one coverage and the bariatric surgery coverage. Yeah. Because so, it yeah. needs to be offered to every person. Everybody. It's so frustrating. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing is is that like be ca- like you can go on it. Just know that it could be lifelong mm-hmm. and just talk with your doctor and they'll either like taper you a little bit down, but you might still always be on it. But maybe like I think mm-hmm. what you just started like point two or something. Point five. Point five. Point five. And so, I'm at seven point five now. Yeah. So like do all so you work your way up and then you might work your way back down. Mm-hmm. You might work your way up. And then so what's happened to me and my medication is that I work my way up to a dose and I've gotten to like a goal weight. Mm-hmm. And I've plateaued at that dose. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm not, the worry is that we don't want to let you get too skinny. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you're continuing to lose past your goal weight, then mm-hmm. your clinician will be like, your medication's too powerful. We need I, to have this conversation. Okay. But if you're maintaining on a dose, your clinician may say that you're just stay where you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of a month by month thing. I really like that they check that. Like yeah. it's a month to month thing that they're yeah. checking in. Cause I think that's one of the fears of people is like, what was if I lose too much? What of them if I don't like look good and now I'm unhealthy? Like they're yeah. all kind of like scared. So yeah. it's good to know that you yeah. guys we check in. We won't, like I said, one of sequences priorities, which is why I really am proud to work here is that we want to keep people safe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there are so many people, unfortunately sharing their journeys online with other providers that just aren't keeping them safe. Yeah. And worrying about people who are dealing with really terrible side effects and they don't need to be. Mm. And just, it's awful. you know, a lot of people are in this like race to lose as much weight as possible. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, people seem really short. Unfortunately, people seem really short-sighted on these medications. We're taking a month at a time. And it's like, we need a plan. We, We should plan for maintenance. Like, yeah. You know, when you go in for bariatric surgery, they teach you to diet out, right? Like you learn, okay, this is the first month, but they talk to you about, okay, a year from now, this is what you should expect. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know that that's how we do that at sequence, but Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's happening across the entire GLB-1 community. Probably not. Where people are thinking long-term. Yeah. And that's why we are such, we're so strong on pushing the strength training and adequate nutrition and enough protein and like close con- clinician follow-up, doctor follow-up. Yeah. Because we want to keep you safe. Yeah. I know every single month when I do my refill, that it's always, do you have any questions? What have been, 
your side effects? What is your weight at now? Like they always check those things and they always check in and say, okay, we haven't heard from you this month other than the refill. Is everything going okay? And I'll be like, yeah, everything's great. Like, so it's very much like I feel very supported, but in a healthy setting. That I mean, those check-ins and the fact that you get those messages is better than our, like half the world's PCPs. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Like they don't fucking check in like that at all. Not at all. Like it'll just be a year thing. Maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe. And you know what, you know, what's amazing is I just love like our, our group of care coordinators, which are like your navigators, like your person. Yeah. They're your person Mm -hmm. and they want to get to know you and they want to help you and they want to support you and they want to cheerlead you and they want to like, oh they're God. not a robot in a chat. Like they are human beings mm-hmm. and they are all incredible. Mm-hmm. And like, I just think we get so many messages where people just love their care coordinator so, so much. Oh, good. And I'm just so happy to be in a place where, and it comes from the top, right? Dr. Spencer and just our mm-hmm. dietitians and that we're not fat phobic. We're not stigmatizing of obesity. The providers are chosen because they want to treat people with obesity. Mm -hmm. Like we're not just a bunch of random docs that like have their own biases. Like everybody's on board to do this the right way. Yeah. You're Mm -hmm. not a quack. That's what I hear all the time. They're not quacks. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, so it's, you can feel safe and heard and seen Mm -hmm. and that we understand Mm-hmm. And so when people talk to me in our sessions and they're like, they say things like I would eat in secret or I would go through fast food mm-hmm. and come home and still make dinner and eat it for my family. I'm like, yo, me too. Yeah. yeah. We've all, well, we've been there for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So my, I, that was one of my big things was like fast food mm-hmm. was I had such a long commute to the hospital mm-hmm. and I knew where every single freaking Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks and McDonald's was mm-hmm. along the way. And it would be like white knuckling it to say, I have food at home. I have food at home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cook dinner when I get there. It'll, we'll be fine. And then I had a toddler screaming at me in the back. Right. And he would be like, I want donuts. Like, fine. We'll get munchkins. Like it's Mm -hmm. his fault. Not mine. Right. Yeah. I would have to put my purse and my wallet in the trunk. Oh, wow. That it was inconvenient to stop at fast food. Mm-hmm. That was one of my strategies for a while. That's, and it a, worked for- that's a good trick. That is <laughs> a good trick. Lie. Yeah. But if I really, really wanted McDonald's, I had to park the car, get out, open the trunk and get my money and go in. Yep. You know what messed that whole strategy up? The dang Apple pay on the phone. Oh, now. oh, oh fair. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and another thing too, is I used to be so triggered by all the apps. Mm-hmm. Food apps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's mm-hmm. and, and Domino's and all the places that we got food from. Yep. Uber Eats, all that on my phone. And all it would take is one little notification. Like Domino's somehow knew when my kids were being crazy and we needed to order. <laughs> I know their stupid little notification comes down. Yeah. It's like, hey. do you want the two for blah, 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 blah? And I was like, no, I don't. Stop it. <laughs> no. And I'm like, get out of here. Oh, yeah. But it would get me mm-hmm. half the time, maybe a quarter of the time. Well, yeah. those were meals I didn't need. Yeah, like those I mean, work. yeah, their marketing so strategy I, definitely works. It does work. <laughs> I had a moment where I had to go through and say, at this, I'm deleting all mm-hmm. these stupid apps. Yeah. 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 And I think that's actually really going to do even like just once a month or a couple of times is to just go through your apps and delete the things that you really don't use. Yeah. Especially the food apps. Yeah. Because there is a shit ton on there that I don't even actually use at all. Anymore. No, the only one I use is Starbucks. Yep. now. It's Starbucks and Grubhub. Really? Oh yeah. When we travel, DoorDash. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's about it. Like, but I do it have Pizza have... Hut and Domino's in there. I don't know why. <laughs> the do- the notifications get me. Yeah. Because I like they used to really bad, and now it's like uh, I got rid of them. But like, I feel like I can navigate that now. Yeah. yeah. That's oh awesome. yeah, it's easy now. Like I am very aware of like I have food in the house and what I should and shouldn't be eating, and it's very like. I love pancakes, right? Pancakes are my jam. I love to go into breakfast, get a good stack of pancakes. I'm, I can't eat them all, right? but I love them. They're she fluffy, does. goodness, buttery. Like that's what I love. And so every time I would go out to breakfast, I would order a side of pancakes. And after starting the medication, I would go in there and I'm like, can I get two eggs and two sausage, please? That's it. That's all I want. 
I, I completely would forget to order pancakes because I was so focused on like, oh, I should probably have eggs and sausage yeah. so that I give my body some protein to work on. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Like even to this day, like I don't like I can order pancakes and only take one bite and but focus mo- mainly on my eggs and my sausage. And it's great. It feels like I finally have some control over something that has controlled me for a very, very long time. Yeah. I think that's one thing I love to see in you is the difference of what it's done to your like mental health with, with food. Yeah. Cause I'm not sitting there bashing myself mm-hmm. every single day, all day because I gained weight or I had the pancake at breakfast or I had the, you know, cookie while we were mm-hmm. traveling. Like I'm not yeah. sitting there berating myself. Like, should I be eating two cookies? No, probably not. But I'm not sitting there like, oh, you're a piece of shit because you ate two cookies. Right. Like yeah. I've had that. I I've heard this over and over and over again, that people on GLP ones can have the treat. Mm-hmm. The birthday party happens. They had a piece of cake. And for the first time in their lives, that doesn't absolutely derail them for an unlimited amount of time. Correct. Yeah. Like, I do not feel derailed. Yeah. You can have a cookie mid morning. Mm-hmm. And still be totally fine for lunch and dinner and move on with your life. Yep. Where before a cookie on Friday meant the diet wasn't starting till Monday. And then if Monday mm-hmm. didn't go right, then it was a whole nother Monday yep. until it happened. Yep. One thousand percent. And so there's something about the way the brain space is just opened up to have these like honest conversations with yourself mm-hmm. where you're like, yeah, I didn't really need that. So I should probably have my protein for lunch. Yes. And then it's like, it's like, you're not arguing with yourself anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have you more like mental, mental gymnastics. Yeah. Like you have more free time in your head. <laughs> well, it's like you don't have that little devil on your shoulder anymore. Yeah. Like constantly berating you for every choice that you make. It's it, he's not there anymore. Or the food calling to you from the other room. Oh, yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. yeah. I have that. Yeah. Like my kids <laughs> brought candy from school or something like. Oh, it was over. I was stealing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was mine. No- like, sorry, kid. I'm like, that feels really crappy in retrospect to say that. Like I would steal my kid's candy, but like, that was what this obesity disease in my brain would do for me. Yeah. Yes. I, leave alone. I could buy them Oreo. I could buy them treats, buy them Oreos or whatever. Cause they're kids and they deserve to have a cookie and not have issues with food and yeah. not be weird. And have a cookie, Right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that mom. That's like no sugar in the house or yeah. whatever. I don't want to create a food problem for my kids. Yeah. So those foods are around because no food is a bad food and we're not going to label food good and bad. And we're not going to start that where they're nine and four. Like we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the cookies would get eaten by me in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. and they'd be like, where are the cookies that we've, oh, you guys must have eaten them all. I mean, mommy ate them all, you know, it's more next time. And like, God, that sucks. Yeah. It really yeah, does. It does. Yeah. It does. My boyfriend yeah, and his like, kids like a lot of snack foods. He's constantly buying snack foods. And coming from somebody who never bought them, like it was like a smorgasbord of everything. And it would like that calling to you at the middle of the night, I would wake up and immediately be like Nutty Bar, Oreos, what like literally anything. And I would remember exactly where it was and how many are were in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So one thing before we wrap up, I would like you to tell our followers like one thing that you would want them to know about sequence and GLP ones. It's like the most important thing. Can I read you some things? Yeah, Yeah. of course. Okay. So I actually, I meant to tell you guys earlier, but I have the dietitians. I asked them that it's funny. You asked me that question. I asked them the same question in the Slack channel earlier today. All right. I said, what are the top few things that you, a sequence dietitian, would want a podcast audience to know about us? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm going to read them to you because they're really, really great. So Aaron said, I think one of the main points I always want to portray to people is the importance of the nutritional monitoring on these meds. Many people think that they can just take the shot, but as we know, the risk of malnutrition is kind of high and the behavior modification, so the diet and the exercise is crucial. I also feel like I talk to so many people who truly just value the support that our sessions give them. Mm -hmm. They've done all the diets and have constantly felt like a failure and now they don't. 
So oh. many are resistant to adding in carbs or eating more than 1200 calories a day. Mm -hmm. But we know that once they do, they start to see success and feel way better. Awesome. Oh, I love all of that. I think there's more. Okay, I got, I got two more. Yeah. Okay. We have yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So, so Allie said, when I try to explain the medications to friends and family, I explain how the mod the medication offers a bridge to behavior change. Mm. For example, somebody who struggles with like anxiety, depression, or OCD would often benefit from some, some form of cognitive behavioral therapy or behavior modification, like going to a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. But many times, if an inv individual is in a really compromised mental state, medication is necessary to create a more stable mental landscape that then allows them to seek that treatment. Wow. Okay. So I explain how the GLP-1 medications have a similar effect in quieting the food noise and allowing individuals to finally put into practice the health and nutrition related habits that they desire to, but often feels impossible. Mm -hmm. Wow. I also explain that binge eating disorder is a diagnosable eating disorder. Wow. And, but just like the term binging, it's often misused kind of like people who say I'm so OCD. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. So about us specifically, Ali wants us to know that so much of the work that we do is focused on sustainability in terms of weight loss, but also in terms of behavior change and mindset around food. Okay. Many people I've met with have said that the medications have healed their relationship with food and that they're motivated to exercise because they physically finally feel better in their bodies. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. Our program goes far and beyond food and touches on quality of life so much. I'll also add that our community support groups are an extra layer of social support to people who may experience weight stigma if they lack support in their usual network of friends and family. And people here will understand and validate them. Wow. Where's the support groups? So we have virtual support groups. You can ask your care manager for the link and they're scheduled throughout the week. I we nice. have one for bariatric surgery patients. We have one for people with PCOS. We have one for emotional eating, one for fitness, and then one for people with eating disorders as well. Perfect. Whoa, so I did not even realize that there's so much more to sequence that I even knew. Yay. I'm glad that you came on and told yeah. us about all the things because now we have I like, love. now I have a better understanding of what you guys are really mm -hmm. doing over there because yes. yeah. I was under the impression of probably all the other stigmas that were hitting you guys. And now that I've actually got to talk someone to, to someone there, like it mm -hmm. makes more sense. Like this is like a better position to me see why I love it so much mm -hmm. like it's really like I mean I love my care coordinator and she's awesome and she talks to me and asks me and check checks in with me but now I know that there's so much more yeah there's so much, so much more. more and we're constantly adding more which I think is what's so cool is that we are really growing and really just trying to enhance the value and we want we survey our members all the time to mm -hmm. ask you guys what do you want yeah. and we don't need to happen so I have one more to read. Oh, and okay. this, one's, I, this one's from Heidi. And she says, my takeaway in my, she's one of our newer dietitians. She goes, my takeaway in my short time here is that food noise is a real struggle for more people than we realize mm -hmm. and a huge barrier to sustainable, healthy nutrition success. These medications change the landscape, clear the noise and allow clarity of mind and an opportunity to choose nourishing choices in a way people have never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Feeling safe with food is an entirely new experience for people on these medications, mm -hmm. and it transforms more than just their physical health, but also their mental health and their overall quality of life. And I hope someday we can have a study that looks just at this concept. Oh, that's perfect. Isn't it perfect? It's it so, is. There's a and the so that's just great. There's a whole bunch of us, but like, that's the vibe you're going to get with our dietitians. Like we get it, right? This is what we do is help people on GLP-1 medications who have struggled with their weight most of their lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of our members have had bariatric surgery and have dealt with regain because mm -hmm. while bariatric surgery might really help for that weight loss, especially in the first few years, mm -hmm. it doesn't really change the relationship food stuff. Yeah. Right. You work. Yeah. Well, that food noise. I yeah. think that's the biggest one. It does not change the food. noise. Yeah. Like you can do all the therapy in the world and that 
is still going to be a it's still because it's a part of you. Yep. Like it's not going it's not going to go away on its own. Mm -hmm. It's not going to. That's why we always say there needs to be a tool belt. You know, bariatric surgery is the actual tool belt, but sequence GLP ones, they can be the hammer and the nails like there's so much more to a bariatric journey or just a weight loss journey in, in general than just the weight loss. Like sometimes you have to use utilize more things like I utilized working with a dietitian. I utilized working with a therapist. I use sequence. I am on GLP one medications and I'm a bariatric patient. Yeah. Like it wasn't just I took GLP ones and now I'm fixed. Right. Like it's a whole host of things that you have to use. But I think well, and sequence like, and GLP ones are a bit like top. It's a good tool. It's a good tool. Yeah. And we all go through seasons in our lives mm -hmm. where sometimes we need more support and sometimes mm -hmm. maybe we need less. And mm -hmm. sometimes we're in a stressful season where mm -hmm. those food noise tendencies get louder mm -hmm. and they're harder to control. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes then we can move into a season where our environment might change, where it makes it easier. Yeah. So like, I, I know for sure, like I've lost a significant amount of weight on my GLP-1 medication, mm -hmm. but a major factor in my success has been going from driving to work every day at the hospital to now working from home. Mm -hmm. It so led you to this. I have quick access to my workout. Like literally if I have a no-show patient, I'm like, yeah, 10 minute walk. <laughs> nice. I yeah. love it. Right. So I, I eat the food that's in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. I don't have the cafeteria at the hospital. I'm not driving in the car for an hour and a half mm -hmm. every day where I have to look at McDonald's and Starbucks. Like, mm -hmm. so my built environment changed, which definitely supported my success. And I know that, and I want to recognize that. And I think it's also really important to recognize the privilege that comes with being able to work from home, mm -hmm. have an amazing supportive employer, like sequence mm -hmm. that understands like that yeah. going for my walk is important for me. And I'm not going to get in trouble for like, taking a 10 minute walk in the middle of the work day, like that they get it mm -hmm. and that, right. So not everybody has that. Yeah, and I yeah. totally understand that. So that's why tools in the tool belt mm -hmm. become even more important to people who don't have those kinds of advantages. Yeah, absolutely. Their, yeah. Their, mm -hmm. So um, if you have insurance coverage for anti-obesity medicines, check us out at Joy and Sequence. I don't like to sound salesy, but like, I really freaking love this job. Mm -hmm. I love being a patient and a member there. Mm -hmm. I love medication that I'm on. Um, I love the people. I just think that, you know, we're growing and we're excited about it and it's just going to be pretty freaking incredible. Well, and I haven't heard one bad thing. Mm -mm. Like no. I have, I have ta been talking about Sequence for what, about six months now six seven, seven months, months now mm -hmm. and i have yet to have a have anyone have a bad experience through sequence yeah. so i now we get people that get a little spicy when their insurance company yeah of course yeah is terrible and it's like we wish we could just yeah, cover, yeah. you know yeah. like it's very frustrating, like, especially like when you're trying to pick up your prescription and they don't have any in stock and you're like, what the hell? Like I get so mad, but it's like, I realize it's not their fault. It's just frustrating in the moment because you're like, it's, it's frustrating when you don't, when you can't get access to the medication that you're prescribed and that actually helps you. Like those two points are very frustrating, but I'm glad that Sequence can be an advocate for those and fight for through your insurance. I didn't even realize you guys could do that. Mm -hmm. So there's so much I learned here and that's being a Sequence member. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. I'm so, so glad. Thank well, you so much, Summer, for being on. We appreciate you so much. And for all of you at home, we love you and, and we will see. I know I almost did it. You screwed it up. I know. We love I know. you and we will see you next, next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>